Chandrayaan-3 mission, India's third lunar exploration mission, has achieved some remarkable feats, such as landing on the moon's south pole, performing a hop experiment on the lunar surface, and making some amazing discoveries about the moon's geology and chemistry. But what exactly does this mission mean for our understanding of the moon and its potential for future exploration and habitation? How did the Chandrayaan-3 team overcome the challenges and difficulties of landing and roving on the moon's south pole? What are some of the key findings that have been made by the Chandrayaan-3 orbiter, lander, and rover? In this video, we will answer these questions and more by looking at some of the latest news and updates about the Chandrayaan-3 mission. So stay tuned and get ready to learn more about India's amazing moon mission. The first thing we talk about is the Vikram lander's unplanned hop experiment on the moon's surface. According to the project director, Vera Muthuvel, this was a surprising and unexpected event that happened just a few hours before the lunar night began. The Vikram lander, which had successfully landed on the moon's south pole on August 23rd, along with the Pragyan rover, suddenly lifted off from its landing site and flew for about 10 seconds before landing again at a distance of about 50 meters. This was not part of the original mission plan, but rather a spontaneous decision made by the lander's onboard computer. So, what is a hop experiment, and why did the Vikram lander do it? A hop experiment is a maneuver that involves lifting off from one location on a planetary surface and landing at another location. This can be done for various reasons, such as exploring different sites, avoiding obstacles, or testing the performance of the spacecraft. In this case, according to the project director, the hop experiment was done to demonstrate the capability of the Chandrayaan-3 system to lift off from the surface of the moon, which could enable future missions to return samples from the lunar surface to India. He said that this was a bonus objective that was not planned beforehand, but rather executed by the lander's computer based on its own analysis of the situation. This experiment was a remarkable achievement for several reasons. First of all, it showed that the Vikram lander had enough fuel and power to perform such a maneuver, despite having already completed its primary mission objectives of landing and deploying the rover. Secondly, it showed that the lander had a high degree of autonomy and intelligence, as it was able to decide and execute the hop without any human intervention or communication. Thirdly, it showed that the lander had a robust navigation and guidance system, as it was able to accurately control its attitude, thrust, and trajectory during the hop. And finally, this means that the lander had a durable structure and design, as it was able to withstand the impact of landing twice on the rough and rocky terrain of the lunar south pole. Such missions would require a spacecraft that can lift off from the moon and rendezvous with an orbiter or another spacecraft in lunar orbit. So this hop experiment demonstrated that this could be further developed and refined for future missions. In fact, India has already announced its plans to launch Chandrayaan-4 in 2026, which will be a sample return mission that will collect rocks and soil from different locations on the moon and bring them back to Earth for analysis. The second thing we talk about is some of the major findings made by the Chandrayaan-3 mission. One of the key findings is related to the distance covered by the Pragyan rover, which traversed over 100 meters on the lunar surface before losing contact with the lander. This is a remarkable achievement, considering that the rover was designed to travel only 500 meters in its entire lifetime. It also managed to avoid falling into craters or getting stuck on rocks, thanks to its six-wheeled design and its obstacle avoidance system. Moreover, it carried a camera and a laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy, LIBS, instrument which allowed it to take pictures and analyze the chemical composition of the rocks and soil it encountered. Another key finding made by Chandrayaan-3 is related to the difference in temperatures just above and below the lunar surface, which could indicate the presence of water ice. The orbiter's infrared spectrometer measured the surface temperature of the lunar south pole and found that it varied from minus 156 to minus 121 degrees Celsius depending on the time of day and the angle of sunlight. However, the lander's thermal probe measured the subsurface temperature at a depth of 10 centimeters and found that it was much lower, around minus 183 degrees Celsius. 
This suggests that there is a layer of insulation between the surface and the subsurface, which could be caused by water ice, which is known to exist in some permanently shadowed regions of the lunar south pole, where sunlight never reaches. However, Chandrayaan-3 has shown that water ice could also exist in regions that receive some sunlight, but are still cold enough to preserve it. A third key finding made by Chandrayaan-3 is related to the detection of hydroxyl and water molecules on the lunar surface. The orbiter's infrared spectrometer, IRS, also detected the presence of hydroxyl and water molecules on the lunar surface, especially in regions where there are fresh craters or exposed rocks. These molecules could have been formed by the interaction of solar wind or micrometeorites with the lunar minerals, or by the release of water from the interior of the moon. The presence of hydroxyl and water molecules on the lunar surface is important for several reasons. First of all, it shows that the moon is not a dry and barren world, but rather a dynamic and evolving one. Secondly, it shows that there is a potential source of water for future missions that could use it for drinking, farming, or making rocket fuel. The third thing we talk about here is some of the other findings made by the Chandrayaan mission, such as the mapping of minerals and elements on the lunar surface and the identification of potential landing sites for future missions. The orbiter carried several instruments that were able to perform these tasks, such as the X-ray spectrometer, which measured the abundance and distribution of elements such as magnesium, aluminum, silicon, calcium, titanium, iron, sodium, and more on the lunar surface. The imaging system consisted of a high-resolution camera, or HRC, a terrain mapping camera, or TMC, and a hyperspectral imager. The HRC captured images of the lunar surface with a resolution of 0.5 meters per pixel. The TMC created a 3D map of the lunar surface with a resolution of 5 meters per pixel. The HSI captured images of the lunar surface in 256 spectral bands from visible to near-infrared wavelengths. The Synthetic Aperture Radar, SAR, which operated in two modes, Circular Polarization Ratio, CPR Mode, and Hybrid Polarization Mode, HPM. The CPR mode measured the ratio of reflected signals from different polarizations and indicated whether the surface was rough or smooth. The HPM mode measured the phase difference between different polarizations and indicated whether the surface was coherent or incoherent. These instruments provided valuable information about the lunar surface features, composition, diversity, and evolution. They also helped to identify potential landing sites for future missions by looking for regions that are flat, smooth, coherent, rich in resources, and scientifically interesting. Some of these regions include the Schrodinger Basin, which is a large impact crater near the South Pole that has a diameter of about 320 kilometers and a depth of about 4 kilometers. It is one of the youngest and best preserved craters on the Moon and has a complex geology that includes central peaks, terraces, rings, faults, fractures, lava flows, ponds, domes, cones, pits, and vents. The Aitken Basin, which is another large impact crater near the South Pole that has a diameter of about 2,500 kilometers and a depth of about 13 kilometers. It is one of the oldest and largest craters on the Moon and has a diverse geology that includes mountains, valleys, plains, hills, ridges, craters, and mare. It also has a high concentration of iron and thorium, which could be useful for future mining and energy production. The Shackleton Crater, which is a small impact crater near the South Pole that has a diameter of about 21 kilometers and a depth of about 4 kilometers. It is located at the lunar antipode, which means that it is always facing away from the Earth. It is also one of the coldest places on the Moon, with temperatures as low as minus 230 degrees Celsius. It is believed to contain large amounts of water ice in its permanently shadowed regions, which could be extracted and used for various purposes. We have reached the end of this video. We hope that you have enjoyed this video and found it informative and interesting. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. 
and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we upload new videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.